Welcome to The Secret Place with Steph Abane, devotions for hungry hearts and searching souls. Oh, hi, this is Stepha. I was just reading this great book. Um, I've, once I've shared it with you before, it's called Life Signs by Henry Nowen. It's beautiful. I'm on page 60 here, and I wanted to tell you um, uh, what he says about productivity here. Um, in our contemporary society, with its emphasis on accomplishment and success, we often live as if being productive is the same as being fruitful. Productivity gives us a certain notoriety and helps take away our fear of being useless. But if we want to live as followers of Jesus, we must come to know that products, successes, and results often belong more to the house of fear than to the house of love. When fear dominates our lives, we worry about our value as persons and become easily preoccupied with products. I even wonder if our deep-seated fear of being sterile does not often motivate us to a frantic productivity. Frantic productivity. How does that word, how does that phrase lay on your, uh, uh, on your ears this morning? Huh, friends? Uh, frantic, frantic productivity. Okay, I surrender. That's, that's one of my weaknesses. Sometimes I go into such frantic productivity that I go on automatic pilot to check the things off my list that need to get done. Um, ever since I finished my PhD and the four o'clock in the morning, you know, uh, working on research and writing for, you know, five years, uh, ever since that stopped, it's been, it's been a lot of years now. And I've been working at trying to like reel back my, uh, overactive, I'm going to call it hyperactive, uh, focus on being productive. Um, some people are hearing this and going like, I don't have that problem, Steph. I love, my life is very balanced. I love leisurely activities. I love having all the space in my life. I am so happy if that is you. Uh, I, I don't have that. I have um, just, it's like, it's like in August, my life takes off like a rocket with the new semester. And although there's a break in the winter, it continues on through the spring. And then all of a sudden it's May. I think of Camelot. Tra-la, it's here, that happy time of year. Right? It's called the lusty month of May. And May comes, and all of a sudden, I, I get off that roller coaster or that rocket ship. It's more like a rocket ship. But I have to train myself to get off. Like I have to intentionally step off because I always have 18 projects and you know scores of people that I want to see that I need to catch up with and that whole huge relational side of me needs to live bigger in the summer. And so I am always working on that. I don't get it right all the time. And in fact, many times it takes me till mid-July at least, end of July, to start to feel like I can breathe. You know? um, it's almost like I feel like I, you know that green Incredible Hulk? Gosh, I hope I don't look like him, but I feel like I look like him. Like, ah, I'm just doing this and doing that. And then, you know, when those gamma rays kind of um, ease off of him, and he gets back into his own skin, and he becomes the right color again. He loses that green tinge, and he becomes, I forget what the character's name is, but he comes, becomes a man again. <laughs> I feel like that happens to me um, in the summer. And it only happens out of being intentional. It, like, if, if I'm not intentional about it, um, I stay in that kind of, like, that big place of, like, getting this done and getting that paper done and getting this and running here. And... So what I did this year, what I did to, like, avoid or mitigate against that, like, hyper productivity is last year was the end. I mean, last, last week was the, the last day. Grades were in. And Saturday, I just decided to do something crazy. What's crazy for Steffa? Well, let me tell you. I got purple nail polish on my fingers. Never done that before. Purple. Um, I took off for the whole day on Saturday. My husband did musician things. And I got in my car 
by myself without calling people and spending time socializing while I'm in the car. Nope. Just by myself, I drove down to Fort Lauderdale. By myself, in 90 mile an hour traffic, I was only going 75, much to the dismay of people behind me. But I drove down there at 10 o'clock in the morning just to check out a little Italian market that I heard about. Mm, there was no real reason to go. I was going to take my daughter next month to lunch there. I, I looked online. It looked great. But I, I thought, let me, take, let me take a deeper look. Just an excuse, really, to just get out and do something like my friend Teresa and I used to call it being on the loof in college. We just go on the loof, like just do things that are unproductive. So I got my purple nail polish. I drove down, wasted gas. Um, I just realized what I said. I wasted gas. So I, I hope that no one's going to be like coming against me about, you know, you know, uh, climate change and the environment and stuff like this. I hardly ever waste gas. Okay, this time I did. I went all the way down there, checked out. I met Luciano, who's the chef, and I bought some olive oil, and I kibitzed with them. The owners that have come over from Italy four years ago, and they speak beautiful Italian. They make beautiful, beautiful arancini, and ugh, beautiful. And then I, I, then I went to the store, a store, a mall I never go to down there. I bought these funky sneakers. Look at them. Are these impractical or what? I mean, they're bronze with black. <laughs> I just, I don't do that often, but I felt like I needed to get the bull by the horns, if you know what I mean. I needed to get the summer on early and give myself some signs and some activities to kind of plunge me out of work mode. Because although I've still been working this week from home, doing this little thing and this meeting with MEA and that little thing, never stopped actually working. I, I, I have this thing called work mode. I think we all, most of us do. And I had to get out of it. And I think it really did, it really did get me out of it. Um, I had fun. And then I'm back socializing, being with people, loving being with people. But, you know, I want to encourage you this morning that if you're one of those people who, and I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if you are, because if you're listening from the United States, you know, this kind of Enneagram 3 culture that we're in with everything, achieving productivity, success, whatnot, we're immersed in it. It's the water we swim in. And, you know, you just, you have to be intentional about stepping off that, um, that treadmill of productivity, you know, don't let it throw you off like George Jetson in that old cartoon. Um, take a moment. Breathe. Walk. Rejoice. That's a word that the Holy Spirit gave my husband and I back when we lived in New Jersey. When we started feeling like we were really on a treadmill. <laughs> and that was nothing compared to now. Because the pace of our culture has quickened uh, so much, so much with our, our digital culture, you know. But I think that we can not just lead the way um, for those who are really struggling with this hyper productivity, but we also can what like just step up in our own life and be aware that unless we do um, once in a while or regularly, I'm going to say regularly take a step off that um, kind of workplace produ productivity treadmill, treadmill of productivity. Unless we take a step off and we say enough, what, what, what will that mean for you? You may be putting your smartphone down or um, stepping away from the computer or just getting out of the house so that uh, the house chores and the laundry and everything doesn't just, you know, it's there all the time, right? Um, be intentional about it. Um, some people say, Stop and take time to smell the roses. Hmm. What, what does smelling the roses mean for you? Does it mean going for a walk by yourself twice a week, once a week? Does it mean cooking a meal from scratch if you don't normally cook from scratch anymore? Something that is like decadent or super healthy. Something that you love to cook that you haven't cooked in a while. Something you can splurge on. I always used to feel guilty about things like that. Like splurging any kind of luxury. I am very, very aware of how much people don't have 
I, I didn't have for a long time. And I'm very much aware of people, not just around me, but, you know, refugees and people in other countries and people who are scraping by. And I, I just always think, I, you know, don't give anything special to yourself because you've already got such a wonderful life. You have everything you need. You have food on your table every day. You have a working car, you know, things like that. But, you know, I'm not, I'm not preaching self-focus at all um, or license to go into debt or overspend. I'm just saying, once in a while, be good to yourself. Once in a while, do something impractical, would you? Do something impractical, just for fun, for leisure. Be good to yourself. God made you, and he loves you. And I'm so glad you've listened today and you've been with me. This is Stefa in The Secret Place. God bless you. Breathe, listen, and receive. Take a moment to soak it all in. Until next time.